Hey guys, it's me Fox. Uh, in this video, I want to show you my new toy and share some opinions about it. So, I got myself Optimum uh, OptiTurn TU2506V lathe and uh, Optimil BF20V. So it's the combination of a lathe and a mill. The first thing which I noticed it was uh, when I installed the mill on the back, there is like a flat spot. It was faced and uh, the one, one pass was much lower than the other pass. So that was like, okay, I guess it's not made in Germany. Then my next adventure was I was milling something, milling and I moved it back and the machine stopped. And I was wondering, what the hell, did I kill it? After what, five days of milling? Very light milling, it was just mostly testing stuff. Turns out that the emergency stop button melted. <laughs> yeah, and I, turn, I take apart the whole machine, you know, and I thought, shit, I killed the, the motor or I killed VFD. And uh, yeah, that was the emergency switch. Then the next thing which broke was the this lever. The pin inside snapped. So I take apart the whole bloody thing. It's it's filled with swarf. Um, all the gears are crunchy. Um, I don't know what to say really because it does meal. It's a bit uh, loose. So it's not the most rigid machine. And uh, I'm going to show you that in a sec. And pretty much I had to adjust everything. The speed, the displays are always on. Like, it doesn't matter if it's uh, If you turn it off or emergency switch, doesn't matter, it's always on. But in the case of the milling head, there is a switch at the back, which you can turn it off. All right. Why the fuck they put the switch at the back? You have a switch here, switch here, and a switch here for the light. And that switch for the light, it was freaking horrible. It was um, a halogen bulb. I'm not entirely sure how many watts, maybe five. It's like you turn it on and you're not really sure if you turn it on or off. This was the first thing which was the most annoying for me, but I really like that it has a variable uh, speed control. That's cool. Right and left. Not sure what the zero does. Obviously they haven't had any other switch. The spindle has uh, uh, another display uh, for, you know, how deep you, you're drilling. Um, we can zero it, switch to inches, millimeters. That thing is pretty cool. Uh, I really like it and it has a switch, which, uh, you know, you can't turn on the machine if it's not closed. Or... So, kind of annoying, but it's kind of cool at the same time. It's made like this. The... <laughs> I don't know how, how, how the hell like you're designing something where, you know, that jams here. You don't really have access to that lever here, right? Like, it has a good points, but in some other points, it's just freaking retarded. Um, and here you have a draw bar, I think, uh, for your, you know, tool changes. That's how it looks on the other side. It has a, um, you know, switch for a high or low speed. And uh, I'm gonna loosen this up. A knob to lower and raise it up. Uh, and again, you know, those locking pins are kind of on the way. Here is the lock. So you can lock that thing um, and use uh, that knob to lower or uh, raise, it, raise it up. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. The other thing is that 
that display it's lit but that one it's not um, which I find quite annoying um, because you know if you have one why you don't have the other one um, and it has a it's battery powered it's completely different from this uh, just like yeah I guess it's a cheap solution this is a meal but because of the looseness of it I, I'm using it uh, only as a drill and uh, because of the draw bar you know I, you have to undo each time the top and then replace the bits and things and you know since I have a uh, ATC spindle I can't be really bothered with that that's why I'm reusing this and putting in here and it seems to be working uh, well enough as a drill it's really nice it's, uh, I have a couple of drills but that's uh, the nicest drill I have now you saw that thing on the on the website you know you have this and you have this so you assume that you could uh, drill the holes in something you're turning that's not possible because the the milling head is uh, quite a lot from the, of the center um, in here, so it's like inch and a half um, out. Um, so you can't really use this to drill the holes in something you're turning, and, yeah, and obviously you cannot slide it left and left and right. Um, because it's bolted to the to the lathe. It comes with the cover, this white thing in the back. Um, <laughs> it's, it's such a horrible thing. It, it comes as a kit um, all together, right? But I had to cut the cover in half in order to fit this thing and have some kind of cover so the shit doesn't go behind the behind the bench. And um, I want to show you why I don't want to use it as a as a meal. Um, I'm gonna put the dial indicator in here. So that's what's happening with the dial indicator. And if I just lean on that thing slightly, it bends one way and then bends the other way. So that's the rigidity of that thing. And I'm not putting really much of a uh, force. I guess you can indicate that from my uh, from the way I talk. But if I put like a lot of force, right? And oh, that's the end of the dial indicator. But yeah, now I'm putting some effort into it. But yeah, you can see how that whole thing just goes back and forth. Uh, Gee, I think it's not really good a review, eh? And then the fact that it's not aligning with the center, it's a bit annoying. So, for the milling thing, um, I got an idea where I can take this thing off. That's, I guess you call that tool post. Then I'm getting my old vise. Uh, and I can put it in here with uh, something like that. And I can lock it in place. And uh, yeah, that's, that thing is pretty solid. Um, that thing is not too much, but uh, you know, for drilling or um, some form of milling I can I can use this if I have to do something quick when you have this interface uh, like this and you try to raise it up you can't so you have to take it really back and then you can open that thing why they couldn't put that thing I don't know, higher or on top of it it would be really easier if that thing would be here um, instead of here. It's like just longer cover and less pieces, right? So it's all integrated. In this configuration, I'm not entirely sure what's actually bending. If it's the 
whole lathe bending or the column is bending. And by the way, it's a, it's a hollow cast, so there is not much inside uh, except the screw. Here you have the gears and what kind of gears you need for particular pitch. So 0.2 millimeters, it's 50, 75, 20, 80. And then for 0 0.3, 0 0.6 and 1.2, you have like 50, 80, 30, 75. So only 50 remains, but the all rest changes. And then you have 50, 80, so that's the same with the last one. But the 50, oh, just 50 is changing. Okay, so here you have 50, 80, 50, 60. So each time you want to change the thread, you have to go and change the gears. That section is for the automatic feed. Um, and here you don't run from the second row, you run from the first. It's a 25, 70, 20, 80. So you have to reconfigure the whole thing. And I'm gonna show you how not easy it is to do. As you can see on the side, it has a through spindle hole and I think it's uh, around an inch. Um, and to change the gears, you have to get the, the wrench. Undo those screws. Okay, remove the cover, you have to loosen the screw, right, take it on the side, lock it more or less, no, it's the same. So you have to undo this, right, and then you have that washer, which is always falling off. Um, you have to undo the screw, right, completely. Now you have to, you have to take off the gear, which is not like uh, the easiest thing. So feet on the, on the shaft, it's so tight that it's like really annoying but the gears themselves are loose like old and like so you have to wiggle that thing back and forth and pray it, it will come off eventually oh yeah it's, it's off now you have to go to a drawer and pick another gear and the gears have a number of teeth, uh, sorry, printed in here or like stamped. And sometimes it's really freaking tricky to see what the number is. It's, uh, it's here by the way. Mm. Yeah, so it, it does take a while to, to figure it out what the hell it is. Then you put that freaking wheel again. Oh, now it went in. Jesus. And after the change, your hands looks like this. Okay. Now I'm gonna put that screw. And that bloody washer. I think it's kind of important which way you're gonna put it because it's kind of can't really see it but one side when you tighten it too much it locks the whole wheels all the wheels so if you want to have it tight you might lock the whole wheels so another thing to be annoying um 
So once you change all of the gears, right, you undo this. Mesh that with the, with the gear in here, more or less. I mean, <laughs> if someone tells me that this is a German lathe, I mean, you, you gotta be freaking joking, dude. Gears are not even round. As you can see, there is nothing more about it. You have uh, two speeds, the slower and the faster speed, but the motor was overheating quite a lot, so I switched that thing to the lower speeds. And um, the other thing which I discovered is the spindle is out of balance. And um, when you start turning something around, I think anywhere after 1000 RPM, the whole freaking thing shakes without anything in the, in the chuck. Um, I think I might um, try to balance it by drilling some holes in the chuck, but yeah, we'll see. Now I'm going to show you some turning of random stuff I can find and we'll see how the finish looks. I have a piece of aluminium and let's go. I'm gonna increase the speed. Eight hundred. Nine hundred. A thousand. Okay. So let's see. Um, I'm gonna move it back and um, here you can see it's a bit of a chatter um, because it's sticking too far here is getting a bit better um, but kind of smooth so now as a finishing pass I will take off 15 microns 600 RPMs and let's see if there is a difference with the lubrication yeah the chips are sticking way better to it it off and obviously now I have to clean it Okie dokie. so lubricated or not there is no difference uh, so yeah that's how it looks and I think it, it kind of looks okay uh, Gonna get a piece of uh, cloth and try to clean it up. Okay. So with the oil, it looks more scratched than without the oil. Uh, well, and I dirtied it up. So that's the kind of finish as you can see. Here I have uh, some sandpaper, the number 3M150.
clean it. How it looks now. Now it's much smoother. With a bit of effort, I guess you can uh, make make it look nice. But yeah, it's not like straight out of the box. Um, now let's switch to... Um, so it looks like this. It's, it's better than this, right? <laughs> let's try something harder, which is uh, I have a um, stainless steel pin, which I uh, had manufactured for me on a professional lathe, a CNC lathe. Um, and it looks like this. And that side looks like that. Maybe it's a bit scratched up, but uh, yeah, I guess you can see the finish. So now we can compare um, the professional CNC machine with the with this machine. And I don't think they, they were polishing or anything. It's just straight out of the box. I start from 600 more or less. Just gonna touch it. Okay, it's touching. A bit more. And the auto feed. Oops, it's not centered, so I'm gonna get a bit more, maybe a bit more, out of feed. So that's how it looks without touching it and um, stainless. So the difference between the, mach the professional machine and this machine, it's uh, hard to judge really. 660, let's see. with a bit of oil and see if it's gonna improve it. Same speed and everything. No difference whatsoever. Let's try maybe, okay, somewhere there, a bit in faster and see if it's gonna change the look. A thousand RPMs. And yeah, the auto feed didn't want it to click in. Okay, now it's in. Nope, let's try a spring pass then. And maybe we're gonna go slower. So. T 
So that's the spring pass at 500 RPMs. Now 400, 300. Two hundred no shiny surface yet. But you know, it looks like the machine part. Um and what we can do more. I'm gonna put like uh one thousand four hundred RPMs and see what's gonna happen. I think it's rougher because of the vibrations, I, I believe. And no difference in the look. But again, uh, I guess you could uh, slow it down, get the sandpaper and try it, try to improve it. That looks uh, way better. It's uh, very smooth and chrome-like. Uh, you still can see a bit of the scratches, but not too bad. <clears throat> and uh, now let's go for a piece of the steel of unknown origin. Uh, it's a round bar. It's getting rusty pretty quick and let's see how it turns. Thing doesn't look as good uh, as the rest. So let's try a chrome plated. Uh, um, what the hell it is? Uh, linear shaft from my old Chinese uh, CNC. I think that was a Z axis travel thingy. And let's see how that one cuts. So it should, it's a uh, chrome plated, hardened steel, whatever it is. It's very small shaft, so maybe 600. Let's see, the wrong way. Uh, 
Oh, I think it likes to be oiled. Oh, it's chattering. That's crazy. Faster. Springy. Um, where do I have a brush? And let's try again. Tiny cut. Maybe faster. Nine hundred RPMs. Obviously, here it's bouncing and here it cuts pretty well. So obviously that thing, it's really, really hard. And uh, how it looks. Actually, the finish on that one looks uh, really good. Jesus. to rotate the tool a bit to be able to fit between the center and uh, the end of it. Oh Jesus. Okay, that should be enough. Lock it in place. Um, and we're gonna go in here and see if it um, be still squeaky. No, no squeaks. So that looks, uh, wow, highly polished. Um, let's go deeper. And let's start. I can see the colors of the chips. And I think we are going a bit too fast. Okay, let's see, bluish, and I have a bit of goldish, so about there, let's go in and get some bigger cut, yep, somewhere there, I have like that much room to play, and let's see. And the speed is 804 RPMs. And it cuts. Let's see if the oil does something to it. Except the spoke. Slowing down. That was it. And let's see. Gonna clean the oil off. Let's 
let's see. Without the oil, or with the oil. Can't see any difference really, except the smoke. But it looks very polished, and I'm pretty sure that's no more. I don't know what the material is. It's a bit warm. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I'm a bit confused. Like um, that thing is way softer, but not as soft as uh, uh, aluminium. And it's the finish is like pretty much the horrible um, stainless. I, I would think it's more gummy from the steel, but turns really nice. The same with the aluminium. And uh, I think on that lathe I'm gonna be doing mostly aluminium and stainless because it looks like it's uh, it looks like it's uh, it's uh, turning very nice, pretty amazingly well, I would say. And the stainless, it's not doesn't rust, and the aluminium doesn't rust either. But yeah, I definitely. I definitely prefer stainless finish than aluminium or something very very hard turns really well. What could I say more about it? Um, I guess I could find a few more words but uh, for the sake of the length of that video I, I, I'm gonna stop and I'm pretty sure not many of you are left now. Uh, so see you next time.